I'm Harry Thuringera, Chief Product Officer at Versus, and I'm here to give you an update on the Genius Beta release. At Versus, we believe that intelligent software agents are the future due to their ability to automate the problem-solving process. Today, Genius takes us one step closer to this future by allowing developers to have the tools and support they need to make their software smarter. An integral part of making the software smarter is the ability to include reasoning, something that computers cannot do and AI cannot do reliably. With this beta release, Developers can easily integrate basic reasoning into their applications, enabling software to figure things out on its own. Genius enables all of the fundamental elements necessary to make an intelligent system. Other AI leaders agree that for a system to be truly intelligent, it must include understanding of the world, even as it changes, reasoning in the face of uncertainty, planning and acting based on this reasoning, and learning from the outcome of these actions. This continuous process of understanding, reasoning, planning and acting, and learning is true intelligence. Here's the genius stack for deploying intelligent software agents. With this beta release, we encompass the first two building blocks of the stack the ability to understand the dynamic world through probabilistic world models that can be updated very easily, and the ability to reason over these models and manage uncertainty as it arises. Now let's take a closer look at world models and reasoning. Think of the world model as a map. You use a map to plan a route from your starting point to your destination. More importantly, you use a map to find an alternative route should you encounter an unforeseen obstacle along the way. In other words, maps are tools that allow you to deal with uncertain situations. Imagine a map that accommodates unlimited dimensions across time and space, including states, activities, physical spaces, and even concepts Genius stitches all of this together into a hyperdimensional world model. Once you have this world model, you can use it to reason and find the best way to achieve your goal. Why is reasoning so key? Without reasoning, you cannot make smart predictions. Without smart predictions, you cannot make smart plans. Without smart plans, you cannot take smart actions. And if you cannot take smart actions, You cannot test if your plans were correct, and therefore you cannot get smarter. Consider this example. You tell Genius, I want an apple. Now, Genius evaluates this request based on available contextual factors and prior information. It is around lunchtime, and your smartwatch says you have low blood sugar. A Genius infers and informs that you want to eat an apple. Alternatively, if you've been searching for a kitchen decor, Genius infers and informs that you want to use the picture of an apple as decoration. Through these regular interactions, Genius continually refines its reasoning based on available contextual factors and prior information and improves its ability to distinguish based on different needs and situations. To demonstrate this capability, In a real-world setting, we brought in an external party to build an application using Genius to do basic reasoning. Hi, I'm Grant Wood. I'm the founder of Notion Labs. I am a technologist, an inventor, and an expert in disruptive innovation. Uh, In fact, my passion is really around taking advanced technology and helping companies to invent disruptive products and services. Grant Wood has worked on disruptive innovations in areas such as supercomputing, renewable energy, financial services, and cybersecurity. Grant doesn't work for forces, and we brought him in as an external validator. We gave him just two weeks and some developers who had never seen Genius before to build something useful. 
So when companies invite you to come and vet their technology, you just sort of assume there's going to be a presentation and some sort of canned demo that shows a narrow use case where everything works really great. And I was a little surprised when Versus was like, yeah, there's no presentation. We're not going to show you a demo. Uh, instead, we're just going to give you a team of developers for two weeks and they'll build whatever you want on top of Genius. Like, wow, <laughs> that's really bold. Um, cool. It's kind of refreshing. I like it. Let's do it. So two weeks with a team of developers is fantastic, but you know it's not a lot of time. And I still wanted to find a problem that we could actually sink our teeth into, but something that is difficult for computers and easy for humans, or at least obvious to humans how to go and solve the problem. So the thing I kept coming back to was scheduling meetings. <laughs> and in 2024, you might say like, why is scheduling meetings something we should spend any time on? But I went and looked at my calendar from the previous month, and here's what I found. I had meetings with people from nine different time zones on four different continents with at least a dozen different companies. And in one particular case, it took us a week and a half to schedule a single half hour meeting with three people. Why? Well, we were each with different com companies and one of us was in Hong Kong, one in Minneapolis and one in London. And it's obvious to anyone hearing that, that, well, for those three people to meet at the exact same time, someone's got to be up at 2 a.m. in the middle of the night to have this call. But none of the tools that we're using that help us to schedule these things can actually understand that and say, hey, who wants to be up at 2 a.m.? In fact, none of our tools that we use to schedule the meetings could actually see each other's calendars because of security problems and security barriers at our different companies. So in this complicated scenario, we now had to get a whole chorus of other people involved. Some people had a team, some people had an assistant, some people managed their own calendar, and now all of these people are coordinating. And when everybody's off by eight hours, it just takes that much longer to get a response. And once we get it scheduled, oh boy, <laughs> please don't have to reschedule this because now it's gonna be another two weeks out. So you might think that this is a rare case, but this is a very common case. In fact, there are companies that all they do is make scheduling software that's supposed to solve this particular problem. And it's a big enough problem that they have valuations of like $3 billion because they're pretty good at this. But even those tools run into a scenario like this and you have to set it aside and the people have to take over. So here was my challenge to the team. I want you to build an assistant that can book meetings with minimal time and interaction for me. It has to use Genius to do all the major decision making, but you can use any tools that a normal developer would have access to. You can use any languages or frameworks or open APIs or tools that are commonly available to most people in an enterprise. Each person on our team and at Versus and myself will end up having one of these assistants and the assistants ought to be able to talk to each other to coordinate the best times for us all to meet. Oh, and you've got to do it all in two weeks. So. Let's see how they did. We started with Genius. Then, using open source tools and resources, we were able to make a simple server to act as our calendar assistant. From there, we created a model that represented the problem that we wanted to ask Genius about. Then we trained our model using the contacts in our address book and the past 100 days of our calendar events. We next began work on the user interface. The team quickly suggested that we create a Chrome extension for the browser and combine it with a large language model so people could have a conversation and just ask for the meetings that they wanted. Once the interface was connected, we could now send back whatever information the user provided so that Genius could try and figure out what it needed in order to create a new event. When Genius thinks all the requirements for an event have been met, the assistant publishes the new event to your calendar, inviting all of the guests. From the prompt, we had two names and a date. Based on its training from my calendar and contacts, we can ask Genius to try and identify these people, which it does with high confidence using some basic reasoning. Now we can give it the date that we want it to meet and determine the most likely times this group will be available. 
Now we have everything we need to create our invitation and invite our guests. What about a situation where Genius can't tell who I'd like to meet with? Let's change our example. This time, I want to meet with Hari and Sarah to discuss the new performance benchmarks. I don't meet with Sarah often, and there's more than one Sarah. A human would just ask which you would like to invite. Genius lets her assistant reason the same way. As before, Genius has high confidence and knows who Hari is. But in the case of Sarah, there are two possibilities, each with a low confidence score. To resolve the problem, it can improve confidence dramatically by asking me who I want to meet with. And now it can proceed just as before. Let's see this example in the real calendar assistant. Grant, if you had more time to work on this, what would you add next? Oh, that's an easy question. <laughs> uh, the team is is really itching to actually like take another crack at it. Like, give us another two weeks. Like, let's let's go do something else. You know, we had to spend a bunch of time learning how to use Genius, and so we were working with people who had developed it and had been working on it, and they were teaching us how to use it. And now, once you know how to use something, like you might approach something completely different. I think we built the model in like the first week and got it up and running in the first couple of days. And we spent most of the rest of the time actually building the user interface and integrating the LLM and getting the conversations between the assistants working and working out deployment issues and security things. And like almost a, a, like a third of the time was actually spent using Genius. So I think the team wants to go back and really refine the kinds of things that Genius can understand so that when it's determining who you're going to meet with and when it's calculating the best time to meet with people, it could actually use a much more sophisticated way of doing that. We got something up and running that works and it does a really good job, but there are actually cases where we maybe don't even have to ask the user for as much information as we might. And we can actually do a better job of anticipating who you're really trying to have a meeting with. So I think that's exactly what we would do. We just go back and like try and do the exact same thing again, kind of knowing what we know now. Wow, that's great. What are you looking forward to with Genius in the future? What do I want to do with Genius next? That's a big question. I, th I think it's a tough question to answer without, you know, sort of sounding hyperbolic, right? Um, I really look at what I've seen with Genius as having given me a new tool. It's a way of starting to include some basic reasoning into the software that I build. So what do we do with that? I think the thing I'm most excited about is actually learning how to use this tool, right? It's something that we haven't had to deal with before, but when I look at really big problems, so for instance, deploying ERPs or even configuring and keeping ERPs up to date, is there a way to go and help that problem? Um, doing financial audits, bringing this into material science, applying it to robotics, like there's any number of things that could be really exciting. But I think the thing that's most interesting is even just learning how to use this new tool that we have because we've been building software for decades now and we really haven't had many opportunities to be able to put reasoning in really small parts of a program and see what the impact is. So I think that's what's most interesting to me to do next. Great. You clearly have a lot of experience with other AI systems and technologies. How is Genius different from current AI systems? I think if I were to highlight one main difference between Genius and other AI systems, let's look at LLMs for a second. An LLM only becomes useful after we have trained a deep neural network on a massive number of documents, billions and billions and billions of documents. By contrast, Genius becomes useful after we've designed a model that allows us to understand a problem that we want to ask questions about. And we can train it on a relatively microscopic number of documents. So right out of the gate, the size difference is, is a main differentiator. To make it easy for developers to get started with Genius, we have created an SDK. It includes getting started guides with easy access to tools and examples, detailed documentation, that helps understand and utilize 
world models, reasoning, and inference effectively. The system also uses containers like Kubernetes, Docker, and OCI, making managing and deploying solutions easy. And finally, a user-friendly admin console simplifies system management. To learn more, visit versus.ai slash genius. We're looking for developers who want to tackle real-world problems. So join our waitlist today. We're excited to see what you will build with Genius. Thank you.